Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are playing on the console version of the game on Xbox Series X. Now, the main point of this particular video is to go over some of the latest console mods with you guys, the main one being Red's first gen, or the console-friendly version thereof. However, ever since Phase 4, there have been some updates and improvements to the console mod system, and I wanted to go ahead and walk you guys through some of those things, as well as just a couple of quick hints to get you on the new mods a little bit quicker. Now, the main thing is you're going to need to go to your mod browser and then as you can see down there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you have your displayed storage and not only do you have your displayed storage but it will show you a little progress bar to tell you how much storage you have filled up but it will also tell you how much memory you have filled up now currently I have basically maxed mine out but also if you want to see the latest mods all the time make sure that you have your mods sorted by latest update now latest update is very important and in order to get there, what you need to do is you need to change this. Now, normally people will have this set on date added. Go ahead and change it to date updated. Now, what that does is it will give you the latest trucks at the front page all the time. So I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys that quick little tip about using the mod browser. And now let's get into the rest of the video about the first gen. Now, I really wanted to use one of my favorite maps for this, and not only one of my personal favorites, but one of the community's favorites as well. Now, we're out here on West Georgia Mud Park today, and I, I'm pretty sure that most of you have this map by now on your consoles, and if you don't, I highly recommend going ahead and picking it up. Now, let's go into the truck store, and before we do, because we're going to need a little bit of cash first, let's go into truck storage, and let's go ahead and sell a couple of our DLC trucks, and we'll sell our CK1500, which should give us enough money to not only purchase Lime's new 63 Mega truck, which, by the way, Lime's 63 Mega, which we will have another topic focusing on a little bit later, is a wonderful mod to download because the size is extremely small. This thing is only like 30 megabytes or something close to that. And it also is very, very, very low stress on the RAM. So let's go ahead and go over to Scouts. And as you can see, we have quite a few enabled right now, actually. But we're going to make our way over to the IR93DE250 pickup, which is once again the console-friendly version of Red's first gen. We're going to buy it. Pick it up and head straight into the customization. Now, we have a couple of different engine options here. I'm going to go with the turbo-tuned version of the 5.9, not the stock version because we want this thing to have a fair amount of power. Then we're going to go for the off-road gearbox because not only are we going to be towing with this thing, but we're also going to be maybe bogging around in the mud a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do that. And suspension-wise, you've got quite a few options available here. You have stock, stock hauling, lifted medium, lifted high, lifted high hauling, and lifted medium hauling. So really, at this, at this point, you could set this truck up for hauling on any of the given suspension heights, which is really, really nice. We're going to go with lifted high hauling. And then tires-wise, you have an incredibly huge tire selection. So you start with your BFG ATs, and then you move quickly along to your dually BFG ATs. Now, if this is going to be used as a hauling truck or a campaign edition mod, I would definitely recommend the BFG ATs. They're very, very good. Now, when you get into the off-road tire category, you start off with these BFG MTs, and then you quickly move along to a Mickey Thompson Baja Claw. All of these are in 31, as is the DBZ IROC, but then you get up to a 34, you get up to a 36, and then they go back down to a 31 because of the dually options. So I really love the way this truck looks on the 36-inch BFG MT dually, but really at that point, it's all down to what you like better, whether you like the 36-inch Baja Claw duallys or the 36-inch BFG MT duallys. Then when you get into the true mud tires, you get into an Interco Bogger, Interco TSL, stuff like that, which also will go up to a 36-inch size. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set this one up with Baja Claws in dually configuration and we're gonna go with a autonomous scout extended winch and a well we already got an engageable diff lock and then we'll do a snorkel because we might as well and then frame add-ons wise you have a lot you have CB antennas you have the ability to change two-tone paint versus full body paint um, both on the bed and the truck itself you have extra weight for the front that way you can keep the front axle down when you're pulling heavy loads which we're definitely going to do and then whoop Wait a minute, gooseneck hitch to go in the bed for when you're actually using this truck in conjunction with Red's trailer 
pack, which I highly recommend doing. And then you also have the flatbed conversion option, which I do recommend that you do. And actually, if you remove the gooseneck hitch, you can actually throw a single unit of cargo on there. Now, I believe you can still throw a single unit of cargo on there, even if you do have the gooseneck hitch. But it's worth noting that if you wanted to be a little bit more realistic about it, I would take the gooseneck hitch off. Now, the camper shell is available as well if you want to use this truck with the standard bed, as is the toolbox, which I highly recommend. And the trunk repair supplies, well, you need to be a higher rank to unlock those. And since I started this map as a new playthrough, I'm not the current rank for that yet. So that's fine. Now, let's go ahead and go over to the visual customization side. You have an angled sun visor, which I'm not going to do, but you can if you want. You also have a couple of roof light options. I'm just going to go for the running lights. I like them a lot. You have a bull bar you can put on the front. The stock bumper can be removed if you desire, and that basically just reveals a metal beam kind of attached to the front of the frame. Um, I'm going to put the stock bumper back on, but you also have an off-road tube bumper, which I think I may go ahead and put on this particular version of the truck. Now, here we get into a little bit more of the visual side of things that are going to be really important. Like, for example, you've got the bed fender trim. You've got the full body paint. Once again, two-tone paint. Bug shield, which I know some people may go for, some people may not. Dually fenders, which are one of the most important aspects of this entire build, and the twin horns should you choose to go with those options. Why did I go back? I have no idea. So let's go ahead and go down to the twin horns, and we'll throw those on as well. And then exhaust-wise, you have either dual stacks or stock. That's about all you get. And I'm probably going to build a second one of these for mud anyway. So we'll go ahead and leave this one stock, and then we'll put the stacks on the second one that we build. Now, wheels-wise, you have three options with the dualies. You have kind of the same wheel, but in three different configurations. I'm going to go with the first ones, actually. They're kind of like a faded chrome. I, I do kind of dig how they look. And some of the color combinations are really, really nice, and the paint has this very nice weathered look, which actually does look really, really good here on consoles, and I, I have to applaud the texture work. The texture work looks amazing. So let's do a really nice blue on this thing. I think blue really suits this truck a lot. And let's throw beans on the dash, and we'll probably do, I don't know why everything in here has doubled up, but we'll do the, auto, uh, the autumn leaf, and that should be good to go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click out of the map view so it stops blinking the global map button at me. Leave the garage and go for this thing's maiden voyage. Let's fire it up. It sounds so good. It really does have that classic sound that you really, ex like, you expect when you fire up a truck like this. Gotta send it off that loading ramp. Oh my god, we literally stood it on its nose on the bumper. That was not what I anticipated doing, but I'm glad it happened. Let's pull up to the trailer store, and we'll go through some of our trailer options. Now we have the long log gooseneck, which remember, keep in mind, you need to have the IR trailer pack installed in order for these trailers to show up. You have to have it installed and enabled, okay? So we're gonna go down the list a little bit here, and we get to the long flatbed gooseneck or the short flatbed gooseneck. I'm gonna do the short because I'm really only planning on hauling one rig behind me, but if I was gonna haul two or three, the long gooseneck would definitely be the better option for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up and go ahead and throw the e-brake on. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the ramps down just before we shut the truck down. So now that we've shut it down, I'm gonna go back into the garage and I'm gonna buy a second one and I'm gonna build this one for a little bit more of a mud approach. And I love how every time I go into the garage, I see Lime 63 Mega, which once again, amazing truck. There will be more coming on that thing very, very soon, especially now that it is available on consoles. So let's go over to Scouts. And I could have just done one click to the left instead of like four or five clicks to the right. Should have thought of that, but you know what? Don't worry about it. Now, we're going to go ahead and blow through this build a little bit faster. It's not going to be that crazy of a build. It's just going to be the lifted high. And we're going to go all the way to the bottom, and we're going to throw a set of proper mud tires on this thing and really just straight up send it. Like, this thing is going to go straight to the mud pits, no questions asked. Autonomous Scout Extended, got the div lock already, got the, uh, the snorkel already. And I'm not really going to worry too much about the other add-ons. I'm going to throw a toolbox in the back, but that's probably going to be about it. We'll throw the... We'll leave that bumper stock, actually. Well, no, we'll take the stock bumper off. Because, I mean, after all, this one's going to be a mud truck. So, we're going to go also with the... Let's see. Well, nothing in there we actually really need. We'll do the dual stacks. And you know what? I'm actually going to take the toolbox out. That way, I mean, we've got the toolbox in the other truck that we can use to give us repair points if we need them, so we don't really have to even worry about it all that much. Definitely going to paint this one red, and definitely going to throw beans on the dash, and now it's time to go ahead and actually head to the proper mud pits. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot to go through the wheels. Yes, we forgot to go through the wheels. Hang on. 
all the way down. Now you have quite a few more options when you're talking about these single wheels. Now you have these old school style wheels with bead locks if you so choose in some different uh, color options. You have some stock styled wheels and you have a few others as well. And I really do like the range that they give you, but my personal favorites are these. The chrome wheels with the black bead lock ring. I definitely like those, especially in conjunction with the red. I think they look great. And now, oh my God, dude. That amount of smoke is amazing. That is ridiculous. And let's see how a more mud-focused build actually does out here. So we're going to head straight to the main section of the park. And let's go ahead and ease you right up onto the trailer. There we go. Great looking interior, by the way. Easy. Really? I love how I look at the interior and it ends up being the entire reason why I fall off the trailer. But let's go ahead and just recenter once more and ease it on up and now we're good to go now what's actually really interesting is like this truck is like the perfect width for this trailer absolutely the perfect width for this trailer which makes sense considering that they were like both these mods were made by the same person but there we go we're good to go right in the middle and let's swap trucks fire this one up and we'll get those ramps off the ground and we'll be good to go now come on ramps there you go. And let's head out. Wait a minute. Why am I not? Whoa, that's weird. Okay, there we go. Now it allows me to pack the trucks. Or truck. Singular. So let's go ahead and make a run for the main mud pit. The main mud section. I really like towing with this particular trailer too. Because the shorter one, you never really have to worry about maneuverability. You never really have to worry about getting it hung up. It really does work well. And at the end of the day, it's probably one of the best trailer mods that I've ever seen in this game and it really has stuck with the community and stuck with the trucks in the modding community for a very long time and there are so many trucks that are designed to work with this trailer like Lime's trucks, Red's trucks, the list goes on and on. Now even with the off-road gearbox I'm impressed at the speed at which it hauls. I really am. I think it does a really good job keeping the speed up. It's not going to be crazy fast, but Red's trucks usually aren't crazy fast. They're usually a little bit more about that realistic approach, and I can definitely appreciate that when you begin driving them. So let's make our way around the pond real quick. Y'all know that pond, or rather lake from the streams, because Diesel and I like to fall into it all the time. It seems to be a popular place for our trucks to wind up hanging out. But let's make our way out to the main mud pit, and we're going to go ahead and get this whole setup unloaded and good to go. Now, I know they've provided, they've so graciously provided a parking lot over there that we are not going to use. We're going to just drive right down into the mud pit area and unload there because there's nobody else here. So, back it up and heading straight for that very first mud pit, throwing it into high and seeing what it can do. Now, granted, high is not very fast in this thing, so let's see how it stacks up against some proper mud. I can already tell you it's going to want us to go into low plus at some point so we can use the blockers, but once again, it was designed to fit a little bit more into that realistic game balance, and I completely understand and appreciate that decision. So, let's see how she does up and over the jump. Still catches a little bit of air, and then right into the following mud pit, staying in fourth gear, actually. That's very, very impressive. Not only impressive, but respectable. Like, that performance is really freaking good. Really good. There we go. Yep, I was ready. I literally, like, I literally had the clutch in, and I already had the shifter, like, right over low plus, right when I was ready to go into it. All right, back into automatic mode now. Or, wow, okay. Just held the clutch in too long. Great idea there. Now, we know this pit right here will sink it, so we're going to actually go around that pit, because I don't really want to sink this thing, like, right off the bat now that we've gotten it out here. And I want to do the course on the side, because the course on the side is a really good way to measure the performance of a truck over multiple different surface types and multiple different levels of softness in terms of mud in a very short amount of time. So let's see. First pit, let's go. Not bad. Second pit, there we go. Come on, third pit. Still in fourth gear. Rolling pretty good, actually. Still in fourth gear. Haven't lifted even once yet. Still in fourth gear. This pit may do something to it. Still in fourth gear. Wow. That's impressive. I've stopped counting the pits, but like, I don't really, I don't really think it matters all that much. It's more of a visual reference than anything. Final one. 
and all the way through, a little bit of damage on the exit, but no big deal there, and it made it all the way through in fourth gear. That's really, really, really impressive. Now, if you guys have used this truck, let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comment section down below. Let me know what your experience with it has been. I want to hear from both sides of that uh, that console um, kind of player base, both the PlayStation users and the Xbox users. Let me know how your experience with this truck has been. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and leave any other thoughts and opinions you might have in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and make sure you have those notifications on and I'll see you guys next time.